Welcome to ZimDog, and we are starting another um, first look at a game. We're going to go through the tutorial missions. This is Europa, Unival uh, Europa Universalis 4. Um, and before we start, let me say, I did not get this game when it first came out. I um, had a lot of other games, so we're on my plate at that point. Um, right now, it's available in the Humble Bundle sale. Uh, it's half off or, or so um, so a really good deal I played Europa Universalis 3 probably just under 100 hours or so um, but that's a long time ago that I played that I've forgotten more than I remember for sure about this game and there's a lot to the game what I thought we would do is start working our way through some of the tutorial missions I don't know how far we'll get in this recording and if the tutorial mission seems too basic we may skip around some um, if things start to come back to me, then because I'm if if I can remember some of it and and feel like I can talk through the things, then we'll just skip on, uh, you know, at the end of this video to actual gameplay and just start playing the game and choosing a nation and going through what is uh, just an incredible franchise by Paradox Studios, just a grand strategy game that for me is a little bit. Uh, it's just it's, it's unique it's, it's it's unlike anything else that I've played and, and there's a lot of ways that you know comparing it to games like Civilization so Civ 5 being the most recent there's things about this game that I really like in comparison even to Civ 5 which is another great game but very different from this one um, but this game does require a lot of thinking <laughs> and getting used to the systems um, and can be quite challenging and that challenge of course is affected by um, which nation you choose to play now let me also point out that this is the base game plus the first major expansion called conquest of paradise which the sort of headliner on what that expansion does is once you're exploring the new world it creates a the option of having randomized uh, land over on the new world which simulates what it would have been like to go across the ocean and not knowing what you were going to arrive at now if you play with that option off you already know what the land is going to look like over there so it gives you an advantage that's unlike historically uh, what would have taken place because those explorers really were surprised every time they found land um, so that's an interesting dynamic that that expansion adds it also does some things for the Native American nations giving them more tools and uh, units and maybe a little bit more of a fighting chance I think one of the difficult things about having the Native Americans in a game like this is is at least before this expansion my understanding is it was basically just waiting for the European nations to show up and steamroll you and now, though I still imagine it's very difficult, possibly you actually would have a chance to hold your own a little bit once that part of the game begins uh, with um, <clears throat> the nations coming over and trying to expand the expansion error into the new world. So let's go ahead and look at just the first tutorial here, basic tutorial, basic controls, and we're just going to start it up and see what happens so I have the music turned off just to play it safe on the YouTube uh, systems that sometimes flag music though I will say the music in this game is very beautiful so uh, something you can look forward to if you do purchase this game or if you pl are playing it having the music playing it gives it a lot of um, ambiance and, and, and a, a really cool atmosphere all right you can minimize this interface at any time by clicking the minimize button to show it again simply click the maximize button thank you okay you can anytime pause the game by pressing the space bar button or by clicking the time control interface you can speed up or slow down the game by pressing the time control interface or pressing the plus or minus buttons on the keyboard unpause the button uh, unpause the game and wait until the first of December to continue all right. When you pause you Europa Universalis 4, you can keep playing by issuing orders and taking control of the situation. In peacetime, you may want to speed up time. While in wartime, you may want to slow down or pause the game to get conflict your full attention. Click next to continue. 
You can use your mouse pointer to move pointer to move the camera by moving either top, bottom, left, or right side of the game screen. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard or do it by holding the mouse scroll wheel and moving the mouse. If you click the mini map in the lower right corner of the screen, you will move the camera to that location. Move the camera by using the arrow keys or scrolling the mouse. Click next to continue. Change your zoom to get a better view of the world, what's going on in other parts of it. Zoom in and out by scrolling the wheel on your mouse or clicking the zoom out located in your mini map. Zoom out so you can see all of Europe. To continue, you must zoom in as close as you can. Okay. Follow the arrow until you find the province. When you find the province, the arrow will snap and point down towards it. Left click on it to continue. All right, you've now learned how to control the camera. Trolling armies and fleets. Rebels have taken over the province of Meath. You must defeat them. Select the army station in London for province by clicking or holding the left mouse button and dragging the selection box over the army. First, go to Gwyneth. Gwynedd. Right click on Gwynedd and pause the game. The units move there. Gwynedd, go there. Unpause. Move faster. So the most exciting part of watching me play Europa Universalis 4 is hearing me try to pronounce all of the different countries and terminology that comes up. I guarantee you. You need to transport your army to Meath by boat. Click attach the transport button to load the army into the ship at the port. Right here, attach to transport, we have this, these ships in here. What just happened? I don't know. I just got exited. Oh, it's because a video is complete. Whatever. We're in the middle of making a different video. Please quit interrupting me. All right. So we, I was going to see if we could look at this. Um, it doesn't look like we can. I just wanted to see how many transports were there. Six ships. Six, oh, 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 15. I don't remember what that means. I'm sure it'll tell us eventually. All right. Attach to transport. Uh, transport your troops across the Irish Sea. You need to select the fleet by clicking on or dragging the select box over it. Select the Royal Navy located in the port. Boom. Send your fleet to Irish Sea to continue. All right. What are these? Heavy ships. We have 15 transports, so we can cover 15, uh, 15 units, I believe. All right. Go to the Irish Sea. Transport button to select your army. And we're going to go to Meath. Right click on Meath. And we're now fighting the battle. The rebels will be squashed. When the battle's over, you'll have to besiege the province. It's been taken over by the rebels. We had to unpause the game. All right, you've defeated the rebels on the battlefield. Your army is besieged, Meath, and will take some time before the defenders surrender. You defeated the rebels and recaptured Meath. You have now completed chapter two of the tutorial. The next chapter you will learn about production. So we are moving quite along here at a good rate through the tutorials. But what I would really like to do Let's figure out where the options are. And at least for now we cannot. It said, I'm wondering if this is options. It says disabled during this part of the tutorial. We'll just keep moving for now. Alright, in this chapter you learn about recruiting regiments, building ships, and constructing buildings. All production takes place in a 
clip London on the map, continue. Provinces is where the building takes place. Uh, each province is different, has different economic military value, depending on such things as base tax, trade power, strategic location, or what kind of trade goods they produce. You'll learn more about these values later. Provinces where units produce a little, 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 little higher. Let's see, you can recruit regiments, build ships, and hire mercenaries. Click next to continue. Armies consist of regiments that can be three different types. Infantry, cavalry, artillery. Each regiment has a thousand sort of soldiers. Click recruit regiment to continue. So, we are in London. We're looking at the province. There's a lot of things to see here. Uh, we can look at buildings. But right now, we're recruiting, so we're going to recruit regiment. Not build ship, not hire mercenaries. We're going to recruit regiment. All right. Um, recruiting a regiment will cost you a thousand manpower in addition to the ducats. Ducats? Is that what the money is called? Ducats? I don't know. Manpower is an important resource that regenerates over time. Without sufficient manpower, you cannot train your armies or reinforce existing ones. You can see your manpower in the top left corner of the screen. I want to see my manpower. Maximum is 27,000. Currently have gained 20, 248 each month. To fully enforce your armies, you need 477 men and 477 will reach the armies this month. Okay. Well, it appears as though our manpower is glitched. It says it's 27,000. No, maximum is 27,000, but it's currently 37,000. So, anyway. All right. Recruit any regiment in London to continue. We'll take the... basic soldiers of Western European armies, the Latin medieval infantry. All right, go back to the province view and click build ships. Four different types of ships. Back. Build ship. Build any ship in London. Galleys or cheaper warships should be used in inland seas. Lastly, there are transport ships to ferry your troops over water. Big ships or large warships, light ships or faster, protect your trade. Well, let's get a big old ship. All right, open buildings. Higher dip level buildings are called special buildings, and a province can only have special buildings from one building category. Unique buildings or buildings can only be built once per nation. Construct a dock. Are you sure you want to build a dock? Two different queues for production. Unit queue allows you to either build a ship or regiment or recruit a regiment. You can also queue units. The building queues allow you to either construct a building, make core, make core, convert religion, or change cultures. Each of the two queues can do one thing simultaneously. Kick neck, quick next to continue. And as an empire grows, it becomes more difficult to manage. Production interface will help you make construction. Training suits later. <laughs> Click the production interface button to continue. So that has not the options, apparently. It is the production interface. Shortcut V, building shortcut is unit shortcut is V, building shortcut is B. Select a unit from the list and click on the map to start production. Five different provinces. Remember to unpause the game. All right, so let's get here. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's make sure All right, this concludes chapter three. The next chapter we learn about war. Click next to continue to the next chapter. All right, so far so good, right? Everything seems to make sense. I think we have made made it through the uh, first two chapters, so let's start chapter three. Casus belli is what you have to have to declare war on someone. If you don't, you'll suffer negative effects from declaring war on them.
so we now have Casus Belli on Leinster. All right, where is Leinster? Right here. Diplomacy and then select declare war. Diplomacy, declare war. Move your troops into the province and engage their army. You must also besiege and occupy the province before you continue. If you want to bring all your troops, you'll have to ferry them over and merge them into one army. Remember, I'm un unpause the game. I don't think we need all of our troops. I think we're going to be okay with these. Now, you should be able to see the siege of Leinster our morale is high everything is fine certain amount of war score the war goal reduces the war score cost of that province by 50% having a claim on a province reduces the cost of the diplomatic power by 50% so we're gonna sue for peace Oh, wait. Oh, we can't move windows around. That's awful. Okay. Let's see. Full annexation. Let's we'll send the demand. When a war ends, your two nations will have a truce unless you annex them because they no longer exist. <laughs> you can see which countries you have truth and which they expire. Uh, truce alert. Attacking someone who has truce with incur severe penalty stability is not recommended. Click next to continue. This concludes the basic tutorials for Europa Universalis 4. You can replay the tutorial anytime if you wish to do so. Play the advanced game mechanics part or find out more about features in the Spanish Empire Beginner Campaign. Okie dokie. Your troops may suffer increased attrition during winter. Advanced Tutorial. Spanish Empire Beginner Campaign. Production missions, war annexation. Monarch points, a rule. The ruler, advisors, core province, religion, and more. This chapter will teach you about exploration and colonization. All right. Go through, let's see, we're going to do advanced tutorial now. This chapter will go through interface and explain what everything is and why it is important. This could be helpful. Let's see about the interface. Ducats. 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 Primary resources used to pay for everything. Units and buildings. We have 115.56 ducats. Manpower is important resources. Puts limits on how many soldiers your nation can have. The manpower cap represents 10 years of manpower. Recruiting a regiment will cost 1,000 manpower per regiment. Reinforcing armies that have taken casualties will also drain your manpower. 15,000 or maximum 17,000. Stability represents how stable your nation is. is connected to revolt risk, tax income, global trade power, and more. can be increased in the Stability and Expansion tab and cost administrative points. Stability can be lost through random events, breaking truces, changing state religion, or having your ruler die in combat. And our stability is three. Prestige is game by winning battles. Wars are random events. Prestige gives your troops increased morale, legitimacy, and better relations over time. Our prestige is eight. Republican tradition. 
Only republics are affected by Republican tradition is primarily reduce, reduces natural revolt risk. Republican tradition is lost by keeping the same ruler for several terms and is gained slowly every year. Low Republican tradition is associated with increased stability cost. Huh. That seems like something new. I don't remember that from anything before, but I could be wrong. Only monarchs are affected by legitimacy and represents how legitimate the rule of your monarch is considered. Legitimate affects revolt risk, religious tolerance, and diplomatic reputation. Envoys. Envoys are characters you can use to perform different tasks. Merchants are used to collect income from trade and steer trade. Colonists are used to found new colonies. Diplomats are used to perform diplomatic actions. Missionaries are used to convert the religion of a province. Envoys will return when they have finished performing their tasks. Two available dis diplomats, zero colonists, three merchants. So these must be missionaries. Yep. You have three resources, which combined are called monarch points. These are administrative power, diplomatic power, and military power. You gain monarch points each month, and the amount depends on your ruler's and advisor's skills. Administrative power, diplomatic power, military power. Alerts notify you about information you might want to do something about. Left clicking alert will take you to where you can do something about it. And right clicking will alert will hide it. Red alerts are urgent. Yellow alerts are important. Green alerts are non-urgent. The diplomatic offers from other countries also appear here. You can convert provinces to your religion. You have a free advisor slot. Truce will expire. No mission selected. You can hire a free military leader. Production interface is designed to help you make production more efficient and easy to use. You can learn more about it in the production chapter in the basic tutorial. So that is the production interface. I want to close this. Holy Roman Scream allows you to see which nation is the Holy Roman Emperor, who his electors are, and also view the member states. Frederick III of Habsburg is the Emperor. So is this the papacy? The yeah. Uh, gives information about the current curia controller and allows you to spend papal influence on trying to win cardinals to your side. The curia controller is the nation that controls the most cardinals. <coughs> the outliner helps you by giving fast information about the progress and statuses of armies, navies, buildings, envoys, and more. You can customize what information you want to see by right-clicking the in the uh, the icon. Score represents how well your nation is doing is divided into three categories. Administrative, diplomatic, and military. You can view score comparisons in the ledger to see what gives you score. Map modes will change the information given on the world map. The next chapter will go through them in more detail. Map modes are a tool to help you get information about the world you can play in. The default map mode is a terrain map mode. The political map mode colored the promises different colors, one for each nation. The political map mode can make it easier to see borders and where a nation has provinces around the world. The trade map mode shows you which province belongs to what trade zone. In addition, it also shows you where trade flows and is here you order merchants to steer trade in a certain direction. You'll learn more about trade steering later. The Imperial map mode shows which province belongs to the Holy Roman Empire. Dark green provinces are Imperial provinces. Lighter green are electors, and the brightest green is the Emperor. You may notice some of your provinces belong to the Empire, which you, as Venice, do not. The religious map mode shows you the spread of religion around the world, makes it easy to see which province or not of your state religion and where you might find friends or foes. The diplomatic map mode information where your course, cores are, who your allies are, and what your enemies are. The green stripes show you core provinces that you do not own. Clicking on these provinces belong to another nation that will update the other nation's information. England does not like France. There are many more map modes to help you get information about what's going on in the game. Try clicking the more map modes button to have a look. 
Oh my awareness. Goodness. Um Winter's map mode. Alright. This concludes your chapter. The next chapter will go through trade in more detail. We need this chapter. Trade is very important. Trade. Alright. The world is divided up into different trade nodes, with each having a different number of provinces in them. A province produces different trade goods, and the trade value of those goods is transported to their nearest respective trade nodes. Trade nodes are visible on the map as they either floating, buoys, or cities. And have light blue stripes connecting each other. Yes, I see that. Click Venezia to continue. A good portion of the trade power in a trade node comes from the provinces and, and can be improved by building trade buildings. Certain provinces are important centers of trade or they have a river estuary. Both of these give bonus to trade power. Your capital province, Venezia, is an example of province, important center of trade and has a river estuary. Click the Venice province to continue. Go to trade node interface for Venice. The trade value in a trade node comes from the provinces that trade there. You can either collect income from the trade value or steer the trade to the next trade node. Trade power is very important value that determines how much of the trade in a trade node you control. The more you, the more trade you control, the more income you can collect, or the more trade value you can transport forward. And this is where we start to get into things that make your head hurt a little bit. The idea that you have to make decisions about cashing out or pushing a trip you know pushing the trade value forward to a different node seems a bit complex all right your merchants can perform two different actions in a trade node collect from trade requires that you own a province in that trade node and will collect income and trade the amount of trade power you have compared to your competitors determine how much ducats you gain in trade income. Remember that impulse game. Have a merchant collect trade from the Venice trade node to continue. Everybody is two days away. The second action your merchant can perform is transfer trade power. This will transfer trade value from one trade to another. The amount of trade power you can have compared to your competitors determine how much trade value is transferred. Select the Alexandria province and click the button to go to the trade node. Remember to unpause the game. Transfer trade power. Pascal Tuscany. Take 39 get, da days to get here. Okay. The trade map mode shows you where different trade nodes are, which provinces belong to them, and how trade is steered. As you can see here, you are now steering trade from Alexandria to Venice. Trade can only flow in the direction the arrows are pointing. Trade cannot be steered away from Venice or Antwerp. And trade power determines how much trade value is in is transferred from one trade node to another. So we are now going to Venice with the trade power. Trade power directly affects how large portion of trade in a trade node you control. Trade power comes from provinces and from light ships that are protecting trade. There are also ideas and a diplomatic advisor that affect global trade power. Select your ships in port in the port of Venezia. Boop. Light ships can be ordered to protect trade. This means they will patrol trade nodes and increase the amount of trade power you have in that node. Having your ship protect trade is very important for increasing trade income. Protect trade, please. The easiest way of increasing your trade powers is by building more light ships and having them protect trade. 
that are protecting trade. Increase your trade power in that trade by node by three. Click the protection interface. Select bar from the list to the left and click on the green promises on the map. Start building. Remember, I'm pause the game. Build five light ships. One, two, one, two, three, four. Unpause the game. Build you some ships. Beautiful. Is that really the end of the advanced chapter? Feels like there's so much we don't know. Production, missions, war, and annexation. Let's see what this Spanish Empire tutorial is like. How in-depth it's going to get, how long it's going to take. I mean, honestly, I've played the third game in this series a good bit, but at this point I still feel like there would be a lot of trial and error if I were to start a game right now. All right, but maybe this last section of tutorials will help sort of round out our understanding of some of the systems. Recruitment. Army recruitment is an important aspect of going to war. Recruitment progress takes place in a province, but can be started in two ways, either through the production interface in the top left or by clicking the Recruit Regiment button in a province. Each regiment costs a 1,000 manpower. Click the production interface in the top left hand corner. So we've used this a lot throughout this tutorial. Select a regiment from the list to the left and click the green provinces to start recruitment. Each regiment costs a thousand manpower as well as ducats. Recruit five land units to continue. We'll just do some man of arms. One, two, three, four, five, unpause. All right, we have recruited troops. Missions are ways to set goals for your country. Missions can vary in different in difficulty and in terms of rewards. You can only have one mission at a time, and canceling a mission will mean you'll have to wait five years so you can choose a new one. Select the No Mission Selected uh, tab and go to Missions and Decisions. Select the mission, finish the re Reconista to continue. finish the recon reconquista. As long as there's still a hill in Hispania ruled by the infidels, we cannot stop our holy mission. We need to liberate the entire peninsula from the moor. All provinces is not a Muslim religion group, and Granada is owned by Castile. When you declare war on a target, you want to have Cassus Belli on them. If you do not have Cassus Belli or just in case for warriors or negative effects from declaring war on them, right click on Granada Provenance and select Declare War. Select the conquest Cassus Belli with Take Granada as War Goal and then declare, declare War. Granada, where are you, Granada? Granada? Diplomacy, Declare War. The war overview window gives you an overview of how the war is going, who the belligerents are, who the war leader of each side. Battles and sieges are listed at the bottom. Cool. I don't know if I necessarily remember this from previous game, but I just may not be remembering it. The result of the war will be recorded and are presented as war score. Have a war score of 100% to continue.
We're going to merge those units. War score. Let's pause the game here. Because this is sort of letting us go to it here, which is making me a little nervous. Our war score is... one percent okay now I'm a little nervous about having this flank open so we'll just continue to fight down here we have way more attackers <coughs> alright Granada is defeated Annex M finished re, re Reconquest of Spain. Alright. Right click the war overview shield at the bottom. Select full annexation. And send demand. Full annexation. Send demand. Alright. So that finished the first of the advanced campaign tutorial the ruler is very important for the development of your country you have three resources which combined are called monarch points these are administrative power diplomatic power and military power click next to continue advisors boost how many monarch points you gain each month they cost gold to hire and you also pay them salaries each month hiring a more expensive advisor will give you more monthly monarch points but you will gain less gold each month Click the you have a free advisor slot alert and go to the government tab. Advisory boost how many monarch points you gain each month. Okay, we know that. Click the empty portraits, go to the list of available advisors. Select an advisor. Okay. Stability cost modifier or yearly prestige. 5.9 monthly. That's a lot. All right. Core provinces are provinces that your nation considers their home territory. It is important to make provinces into cores to avoid overextension. A province that is not a core province significantly reduce tax income and manpower. Having claim on a recent conquered province will reduce the cost and time it takes to make it core. Make core in Granada to continue. Make core. It would take three months. Cost a hundred. Base cost is a hundred. Um, it would cost ten administrative power, which we have a hundred forty-four. Okay. Maintaining religious unity is important for keeping your nation stable and rebel free. To have religious unity, you must convert promises to your state religion. Converting the religion of a province requires missionary. Conversion progress can be imp improved by high stability. Convert the province of Granada to continue. important part of improving your nation's economy and military strength. All basic buildings can be built in every province, whereas a province can only have one special building of each category. Can only have special buildings of each of one category, sorry. Unique buildings can only be built nation blah, blah, blah. Construct a temple in Granada to continue. Building. Where is temple? Okay. Spanish Inquisition, very active in the Kingdom of Castile and Aragon between blah blah blah. Forced conversions and expended inquisitorial powers led to unrest. In 1484 and 1485, there was a revolt and protest of Inquisition expansion power. Rebels! There are many different types of rebels. Each faction has different agenda. The revolt risk in a province determines likelihood of revolt happening. You can either choose to defeat the rebels in battle or negotiate with them in the stability and expansion tab. Defeat the rebels to continue. We will crush you.
No rest for the weary. Stability re represents how stable your nation is. Stability is connected to revolt risk, tax income, global trade power, and more. Stability can be increased in the Stability and Expansion tab and Cost Administrative Power. Click the shield in the top left and then click Stability and Expansion tab and under Stability click Boost. Uh, click the shield top left and click Stability and Expansion. Boost. Royal marriages are a way to form a bond between your nation and other nations. With no unit selected, right click a province in Portugal. Dynamic actions. Royal marriage option. All right. Dynamic actions. Royal marriage. Increases your legitimacy over time will give you one time reduction in legitimacy. It depends on the difference in prestige and legitimacy of two countries. Having a royal marriage with another nation gives you a chance to merge your dynasty and possibly entering a personal union. Decisions allow you to reform your nations in some way. We're on 12 of 18 of this uh, part of the tutorial. If the requirements are fulfilled, you can enact the decision and immediately gain the effects of the decision. Some decisions can be large undertakings, such as forming Germany or Italy. Click the National Decisions Available Alert and go to the Missions and Decisions tab. Form Spain diplomatically to continue. All right, let's see here. National Decisions Available. Form Spanish National Diplo Diplomatically. Global expansion in newly discovered areas established with colonies is transferring Spain into one of the most powerful and wealthiest nations of our time. Spanish explorers are constantly moving into new territories and extending our borders. Immense amounts of gold and silver are being brought back to our motherland, filling the coffers of our state treasury. Country changes to Spain. Inherit Aragon. Spain gains a claim on a Span Spanish region. Madrid will become the new capital. Technologies can be un unlocked by spending monarch points. Technology is divided into three categories. Each category is associated with one of the three monarch points. Being ahead in technology will give you a penalty to technology cost. It is a good idea to plan technology and ideas so that one, ones you want do not require the same monarch points. It's also good to plan in accordance with your ruler's ability. Unlock Noble Republic 7 to continue. It's 545 administrative power, which we have a bunch. Idea groups can be chosen at specific intervals. Depending on your administrative technology, technology just research unlocked your second idea group. Idea groups are ways of specializing a country and make it more unique and stronger at performing certain tasks. Once chosen, idea groups cannot be removed or changed. Open the ideas to continue. Unlocking an idea of an idea group costs 400 monarch points of either administrative or other than which monarch points are used depends on the idea group. It's a good idea to choose an idea group that uses your monarch points of the type you have plenty of. Click the free slot button and then select the expl exploration idea. Free slot. Exploration. Our commitment to our col colonial empire has changed the attitude of people to jobs and Hold on. Okay, we'll just choose it. There's a lot there to read. Unlocking three ideas will also unlock one of your national ideas. Most of the larger nations, some of the smaller ones, have special national ideas. Quest for the New World is an idea exploration idea group. It allows you to recruit explorers and conquistadors of quests to get first in line colonial ventures. Unlock Quest for the New World to continue. All right, exploration. I believe, if I'm keeping tabs correctly, this is the last and final f part of the tutorial. Exploration and colonization is an important part 
of U, uh, EU4. Discovering new lands and founding new settlements is a relatively peaceful way of expanding your empire. Quick, next to continue. Uncharted lands are hidden by Terra Incognita. You will need an explorer or a conquistador in order to move into Terra Incognita. To recruit explorers or conquistadors, you have to first have unlocked the quest of the new world idea. Select your fleet and, and a little, 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 to continue. Fleet. Christopher Columbus made two attempts in 1485-1488 to convince the king of Portugal to finance an expedition to try and find a western route to the Orient. After being rejected the second time, Columbus turned his efforts towards the Spanish crown. Backed by Italian investors, Columbus finally managed to convince King Ferdinand to agree to the expedition on August 14, 1492. After having been made Admiral of the Seas and promised to share the profits, Columbus finally set sail. Mm. Okay, order your ships into Terra by right-clicking the area. Remember to unpause the game. Have your fleet sail west and follow the arrow to continue. There goes Columbus. But dangerous because of attrition. We need to pause it. Whenever your ships are at sea too far away, your supply ships to reach them, they will suffer attrition damage. In a normal game, you would have to explore more slowly, taking your ships back for repairs whenever necessary. For the tutorial, however, naval attrition is severely reduced. Have your fleet set sail west and follow the arrow to continue. Here they go. Follow the arrow. Follow the arrow. Follow the arrow. On October 12th, 1492, after 34 days out of sight of land, Columbus and his crew set foot on an island in the Bahamas, which Columbus named San Salvador. They had discovered a new world. Uncolonized land can be settled by sending a colonist there. How far away you may found a colony depends on your colonial range. Uncolonized land can have a population of natives in them, which may be worth taking into account. Maybe. Natives with high aggressiveness are more likely to attack your colony. Click to Tortuga to continue. Colonies can be founded by nations that have access to colonists. Colonists are primarily gained by the exploration and expansion idea groups. When a colonist is sent to an uncolonized province, he first has to travel there. Once he has arrived, he will begin constructing a settlement. Once settled, a colony will take some time to grow before it becomes self-sufficient. The amount of new settlers in the colony will increase each month and it needs a thousand to become self-sufficient. Having a colonist present will increase the growth of select of settler population. Well done. This concludes the New World chapter of the Spanish Empire campaign and also marks the end of the tutorial. You may now hopefully grasp the basic tools to get you started in Europa Universalis 4. We recommend that you make good use of the hint system once you start playing a regular game. Have fun with the game! I love it! I love it. Okay. So what we are going to do now that we have done such good work making it through the tutorial <coughs> as you see we've gone through the basic tutorial the advanced tutorial and the spanish empire beginner campaign okay so we can go back now one thing i would say a little little complaint here and and this is a complaint not only for paradox but for the world in which we now live we get all of these little nickel and dime expansions New content is available for purchase. And I'm looking at the Steam store now. This is the most recent piece called The American Dream. On July 4th, 1776, the Continental Congress of the 13 American colonies have declared independence from Great Britain. The American Revolutionary War, have started, having started the year before, would last another seven years and see the birth of a new nation, the United States of America. American Dream DLC adds over 50 new unique, unique events, un, unique events, not anything about naked. Ten themed events pictures as well as several new unit models to the United States of America. Okay? Isn't that so exciting? And then they've got all these pictures. It just looks awesome. Okay? So that sounds fun. The problem is that every 
fairly often they come out with these and it's two dollars here five dollars there seven eight dollars there thirty dollars there because it's a major expansion unless you get it on sale like we did so I just wish this is what I wish I wish if these ideas for content already existed when the game was being developed that they would have been included in the game if a lot of these ideas are things that fair enough shouldn't be con sh you know for whatever reason were not contained in the base game and you want to include it so people can enjoy more content make some of them free hello there's no you know talking about making I know this might not might not make your investors happy but making your fans happy the people supporting your games game after game after game and the second thing is just put them all together in one thing and price it very reasonably what really bugs me is seeing a list of and civilization does this, does this even worse I'm telling you it's not just paradox or, or Europa Universalis it's a lot of games these days but you can go to some games and you'll see 20 options some of them are $1.99 each and it's just annoying to me if it's content that's worth having let's include it in a very reasonably priced expansion pack and let's get everything at once <sighs> rant over okay so what we want to do now is we're gonna bring this video to a close very shortly okay but what I want to think about out loud with you here is two things one what are the options that we're gonna play with when we start playing and two what nations would we consider playing first let's click on content there's no mods that I have and the only DLC is currently Conquest of Paradise alright let's look at options here first of all game options auto save interval yearly video full screen resolution refresh rate gamma tree shadow everything's turned on oops audio we have music down unfortunately there's a little quick sneak at how awesome the music is controls whatever we'll stay on default okay so not a lot of options there now let's say we want to play single player we have no saved games now historical starts this is important <clears throat> I always want to go big or go home so if I'm playing I'm probably gonna start in 1444 the earliest that you can start at but you have lots of options all the way down to 1792 or it looks like you can change it as you will right okay so we're gonna to go to 1444 um, we want to look at I think political yeah we want to look at the political map terrain map mode that doesn't help us too much political map mode so if we're saying 1944 now can you go back no you can go 45 but 44 is as far back as you can go November is the earliest month which you can go okay and it gives you a little bit of information about what's going on at this time period so this is probably what we would choose now they give you uh, in terms of time period to start they give you some options Ottoman uh, it's recommended for new players Castile it's recommended for new players France new players England uh, it's not recommended for new players and I will say you know a lot of people have this tendency oh whatever I'm gonna choose England um, it looks like a big nation you know it looks like you're in a powerful position easy to get to the new world the problem with England is you are embattled with France from the start I mean it is just it is almost guaranteed that you're gonna have con so it actually can be a very difficult nation to play with at times Austria Sweden I like Sweden uh, Portugal Muscovy right here Venice lots of money trade uh, religious power Poland so these are the recommended <coughs> and each time you choose one like you know I mentioned I like Sweden it gives you a quick look first of all here's the difficulty the ratings of all of its stuff military economy and di uh, diplomacy Sweden is a lesser partner we're a personal union with Denmark 
since 1397 that's a long time but if you look at these different ones you see different difficulties all these are pretty much the same until you get to England according to this the difficulty goes way down same with France Castile and then Ottoman is pretty high difficulty but it still says it recommends for new players so Sweden I wonder Sweden is considered easier than Norway and it looks like the main difference is going to be just Sweden has a stronger economy um, now because it's the expansion we can also choose things like you know we want to be the Cherokee look at that economy it's non-existent look at that difficulty that is amazing Creek Indians all these Indian nations over here Cree it would be interesting to start as an Indian Indian nation and uh, Comanche at least over here you'd have a little longer possibly to, pre to prepare all of them have the same difficulty level and the same stats um, what is observe mode allows join a game without playing country said you can watch what is happening to all the other in all the countries yeah no thanks um, okay so yeah I mean Sweden is gonna be a, a thing that we might consider playing Naples is another one I could consider Venice the economy and the di diplomacy is very strong um, Portugal I've been to Portugal so that could be fun um, again just kind of thinking out loud Scotland's always interesting I just can't do England the difficulty level is a little lower than I would have thought I guess because you have such high economic and diplomatic statistics um, boy you just start off with front with war don't you hundred years war is just going on Denmark is another interesting one it is more difficult than Sweden like, again economy is lower um, but that could be interesting it's gonna be cold up here if we decide to go with Sweden you know I think what about Norway it's pretty difficult but at least you have more access I mean I think that the issue perm never even heard of you perm Kazan Kazan I think the issue with Sweden, especially with the the emphasis this time around on col colonial colonies expansion, is that we are a little far east, and I think one of the priorities you're going to have to consider is is can we get one of these nations over here, <sighs> or even. Boy, that's the advantage of Norway, isn't it? They do have access over there. Okay, anyway, I'm rambling. So we'll have to make that decision. I'm leaning towards Sweden. I just, you know, it'll be the first time I've played it. And uh, just, I think it's interesting playing these, some of these countries up here uh, that aren't in the heart of everything of Europe, but still have a say in how things go. Um, and, and, and plus, they're a little closer to the wild, wild east over here that just, you never know what's going to happen. So all right so that may be what we end up doing now let's look oh you can do random nation who did it give me burgundy pretty easy country actually where is burgundy center on burgundy please is this burgundy no is this burgundy yes oh that looks like oh that's also burgundy yeah there's no way i'd want to start split like that that just seems like a headache all right let's go to options though um, options bonuses none grant economic military and diplomatic bonus either all AI or all players if set to none no nations will get bonuses with players all non AI nations gain the following bonuses so that's a way to control difficulty we could have some player bonuses I mean I might consider playing like that AI difficulty full skill yeah I would play on normal lucky nations certain AI nations special luck bonuses historical luck bonus was given to eight historical successful nations tend to result in a more historical world 
Random. Luck bonuses will be given to eight randomly determined nations. Weight towards larger, more advanced powers tend to result in more random world. Or none. No nations. And this is only talking about AI nations. So I would probably go none with that. We're not going to allow players to hot join. We're not going to allow players to play the same country. That would be interesting. It's almost like a co-op experience. Uh, enables or disables. Especially useful, you want to spoil how the random new world looks before you've discovered it. All right, so those are the options that we would probably play with. Now, random new world, we would probably check that. And Iron Man mode, or desire a more challenging game where they cannot simply reload whenever things go badly. Limits the number of save files per game to one. Non-optional and frequent auto-saving. Cannot use console, console cheats and cannot switch countries. I would probably play with that, honestly, just to make it a little more difficult. That's a kind of difficulty that I don't mind. Giving the AI bonuses and all that, that doesn't sound as appealing. So that's kind of the setup that we might go with when we play. Might go with Sweden, though that's still in, in consideration. And those are probably the options we would use. Okay. Europa Universalis 4, tutorial missions complete, gameplay plan has been set up. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, till next time, MDog is out.